Good morning children you are welcome to lesson number 4 this is chapter number 4.1 the voice of the ring by a particular poet who is known for his long contribution in the freedom struggle of the USA who is the writer of the famous collection of the poem the leaves of the grass song of myself and he is also the person who said what I see today you will see tomorrow. He is the person, he has a lot of contribution, contribution in the field of the freedom and changing the mind of the people. So we are talking about whom? We are talking about no other than Walt Whitman who was a famous American poet. He is known for many of the, the many of the collisions and some famous uh, poem like O oh, Captain, My Captain, The Leaves of the Grass, The Song of Myself. Here, in all this uh, poem, he celebrates himself as he is. He celebrates uh, his fellow citizen. Therefore, in order to learn, learn the, the detail of this relation, we will move to this very simple poem and the very interesting one the lesson that the voice of the rain and we'll learn it we'll simply learn it through it in english and that will be presented by your english teacher k jalal so here we go let's move so my dear children first let us see this is the picture so this uh, in this uh, picture what you can see you can uh, see and something is falling what is that these are the droplets these are the droplets falling from what falling from the sky when it is uh, falling it makes some sound so in, when you when you listen to it how to, how you feel like you, you feel a kind of as double O T H I N G soothing kind of sound means a so coming effect your mind become pacified you never say rain rain go away rain rain go to Spain don't come again but you feel like telling rain rain come again come another Saturday come another Sunday I'll listen to your song I will listen to your painter and I will be listening to your repeated rhythm and I will be feel I will be I will be sleeping in my in my parlor. So these are the kind of the appeal, these are the kind of the request that is made by every child, every school going child, because the sound is so pleasant, the sound is so soothing, the sound is so coming. Therefore. In order to see this uh, poem, let us go, let us continue with Walt Whitman's poem. So initially what I will do, so I will go to the reading out of the, the poem. So here also another picture of the rain is uh, there, you can see this, uh, this one also. And this one also is a very informative one. What are the beneficial impact of the, the rain? What does rain due to man how this rain is compared to something if if a particular thing is compared to another thing in literature what is the term for it okay there are two three terms for it number one simile number two metaphor number next general term parallelism parallelism Therefore, let us continue. Here we go. Let us continue. So, my dear children, first what we will do, I will be reading out of the poem and you will see this uh, poem. Okay. <clears throat> so, here we continue. Let us uh, go. This uh, poem is written by Walt Whitman. He was a famous American poet as I told you. So, after reading out, after reading out of the poem, so you will understand that the sound, you will understand that the rhythm, you will also be understanding some of the, the thing you will be keeping in your mind like is the poem 
written in the free verse or is it having some rhyme? Rhyme, you know, very simple. Means the similarity of the, the sound, sound of the terminal words or the last word or successive lines. Isn't it? So it will be so nice. So when we'll learn this poem and we'll also enjoy the, the song and at the same time we'll have some message. We'll, we'll get some information pertaining to the beneficial impact pertaining to the benevolent impact of the rain. Therefore, so first I will go through the poem. You listen to the, the sound, sound of the, the poem, sound of the, the rain, because it all talks about the voice of the, the rain. It talks all about the sound of the, the rain. Alright? Here you go. Let us continue. And who art thou? And who art thou? Said I to the, the soft falling shower. Which strange to tell. Gave me an answer. As here translated. I am the poem of art. Said the voice of the, the rain. Eternal I rise. Impalpable out of the, the land and the bottomless sea, upward to the heaven, whence vaguely formed, all together changed, yet the same. Then I descend to love the, the drought, atomies, the slayers of the, the globe, and all that in them without me, where sits only. Latent, unborn, and forever by day and night, I give back life to my own origin and make pure, beautify it. For song, issuing from its birthplace, after fulfillment, wandering, wrecked or unwrecked, duly with love return. So nice this uh, poem is. This poem only has 12 lines and it is uh, so informative, so interesting. Okay. Therefore, in order to, you know, to learn this uh, poem, it is better that we learn something about the poet, about well written because we are very fortunate to have a poem by so famous a poet, Walt Whitman. Therefore, let us go. Here we continue. So, we will be going to the poet. We will be going to the, the poet. Now, my dear children, so we are coming to the poet, Walt Whitman. So, Walt Whitman was born on 31st May 1819. He was born in New York. Okay. He was uh, born in West Hills, in a particular hills that is called West Hills in the United States of America. And he died on 26 March 1892 in Camden, New Jersey in the United States of America. So his uh, famous collection, world famous collection, Leaves of Grass, Songs of Myself, Oh Captain, My Captain. So these are the poems, these are the collection, these are the collection of the poem and because of uh, this collection of the poem, he was awarded to what? He was awarded to the Golden Kite Award for picture book illustration. So he got a lot of awards, a lot of laurels and prizes because of his contribution in the field of literature. So now, my dear children, let us continue, let us see the image of the, the poet. So, this is Walt Whitman. So, this uh, poet is also a philosopher and he was influenced by the other philosophers of the, the time. Okay? Emerson, Thoreau. Okay? They were world famous, world famous poets and philosophers. So, my dear children, let us uh, see. This is Songs of Myself. This is Songs of Myself is the collection of the, collection of the, the poem. This is Songs of Myself is one of the most popular poems of Walt Whitman's volume, Leaves of Grass. So, in the, the Leaves of Grass, 
this is the collection song of myself it is also it is also the longest it is an incredibly complicated poem and impossible to sum up in just few lines as its simplest do the poem is a celebration of life it is a song about the speakers transcendent life transcendent life means supernatural means the life outside this natural or earthly life is about becoming one with the nature and understanding and accepting truth of oneself and meditating on what what those truths mean so in our poem also the voice of the, the rain will see that the poet become one with nature the poet poet takes a personification from nature therefore in the poem what he does he unifies himself he identifies himself with the with nature itself and tells that nature has a lot of beneficial impact without a nature or man cannot think himself to be separated from nature therefore now let us go through the poem once again in order to understand the poem and after after explanation of the, the poem will come to the generalization will come to the generalization of the, the poem like what what is the, the theme okay and will also come to some of the, the important terms under the, the lines will also come to some of the some of the, the question extract question for our comprehension of the, the poem better because extract question comes in the, the exam like who is the who is the, the poet of the, the above line who is the, the speaker in what context he say it so find out the, the what similar with the with the, the what that is mentioned in the in line number say 1 or 2 like that this sort of question also we'll see now my dear children as uh, so uh, it is a time to go to the introduction and after going to the, the introduction immediately we'll be going to immediately followed by it we'll be going to going to the explanation of the poem so here you go let us continue with the introduction first the voice of the, the rain is a short free verse poem by american poet walt whitman originally published in the periodical called outing in 1885 so this year is very important so when you when you study the history when you study the, the history of america history of the, the world particularly america in the, the 1885 what were the what were the political what were the social changes or what were the social scenario everything you can understand and you can understand how the, the poet as a as a person from the, the society was influenced by that particular that particular culture that particular society that particular changing scenario the voice of the rain is a poem written by walt whitman in which the rain personifies itself to the to the person by calling itself to the poem of so now my dear children so see this so what personify so personify is what personify is a part of speech so it is a verb okay it is a verb personify means coming from the, the person coming from person person is the noun person means the individual therefore personify means what if you are personifying means you are giving the attributes you are giving the qualities of the person to the non living things or in animate objects make correct therefore in short term you can tell that personification is a figure of speech in which in animate objects are given the attributes or the quality of the animate object or living object like the person or the other as if they are also having the 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 human feelings emotions and and other qualities all right that means you understood to that rain here is not simply rain it is it is just like human being it can feel it can feel it can it can sense it can smell 
and it can it can be beneficial it can be beneficial it does something in a very deliberate manner so that human being get the get the fruit out of it that means here the rain is personified my dear children therefore personification is a figure of speech personification is a poetic device is it clear okay let us proceed it was a later reprinted in the leaves of grass which was the most celebrated collection of grammar of bits so in the competitive in the competitive exams in future you may be asked okay you may be asked this question leaves of grass was written by whom then you will be remembering it is the wal whitman's collection it talks about the democracy it talks about the freedom of freedom of america okay it is a kind of celebration it is a kind of celebration the voice of the rain is a poem written by wal whitman in which the rain personified itself to the author by calling itself the poem of the earth now see when i tell that rain is equal to something okay equal to something then what is the, the figure of speech what is the poetic device the poetic device that is used there is called the is called the metaphor am i correct is called the metaphor metaphor is a implied or indirect comparison between the two things which are totally different okay totally different in nature therefore rain is compared to what rain is compared to the poem of art that means rain and poem or rain and song has some similar okay similar quality even though their components or the elements are different yet they have some qualities which are common therefore the poet uses this analogy the poet uses this comparison the poet uses this this particular figure speech called metaphor then let us continue here we go the rain text talks about how it how it rises rises as the vapor from the sea and the land and the float after till the heavens are where it changes its form become a cloud and and fall back to the earth on the land that are filled with the drought and allow the, the city to grow or germinate the poem is written as a free verse without any specific form in just nine distinct lines in the, the poem the, the role of the, the poet is equated with the rain okay the role of the poet is equated to the rain rain and now see rain and poet also is similar therefore there is another another analogy also another comparison also means the work that is done by the, the rain is also done by the, the poet so what does the rain rain do rain comes into the form of the, the rain drop and then what happen it uh, it purifies it beautifies it it uh, it uh, again again it does uh, germinates and it 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 uh, makes the world green in the similar manner the poet what makes the what what makes the poem and the poem has the poem has some effect the poem has lot of effect on the human being it gives a message it gives the moral and accordingly on the basis of that society changes all right therefore rain under the poem the rain under the poem are the same therefore whitman's poem was written as a purpose of affecting the vital and the eternal behavior of people just like nature does means obviously with some deliberate purpose this a particular poem was written by the, the poet in order to effect some change in human being therefore let us go my dear children so now we will be going to the explanation of the, the poem so here you go let us go to the, the explanation of the, the poem so we will go to line by line meaning of the poem now let us see let us explore the, the poem let us explore the, the poem let us come to the, the first stanza so i have uh, taken this uh, first uh, three lines as been the as been the, the first stanza it is starting with n and ending with rain in the outside also 
rain continues therefore it will be very easy for us to understand this particular first particular poem it is quite practical and very much lively therefore let us go to the first stanza will you start here you go and who art thou said i to the soft falling shower which strange to tell give me an answer as you translate it um the poem of art said the voice of the rain so now when we we were kids when we were in the nursery classes or in the kindergarten classes then we had the poem on rain then we could understand what a rain is okay so we saw the, the water cycle we saw the water cycle so now how this the water cycle is the form so water cycle is form in this manner see so now this is the droplet coming to this earth coming to this earth okay and now it is the rain rain comes to the earth okay and now when there is the sun due to the impact of the sun what happen the rain water into the water body like the sea river ocean and the other they do what they evaporates evaporates they evaporates they evaporates to the to the heaven to the sky to the sky it evaporate and after going there what happen to it so it the form it the form to the tiny so now what exactly happen there is atmospheric so there is atmospheric change there is a change of the temperature temperature also and because of that due to condensation due to condensation condensation what exactly happen this a water vapor water vapor it forms into tiny particles tiny particles of water of water or some droplets some droplets are formed when these the droplets due to again the change of the, the uh, temperature what it does it forms to the third one it forms to cloud now this the cloud are at the mercy of what at the mercy of the, the wind and because of the, the wind what it does it now begin to travel from one place to the other and then what happen then it again it again come back to the earth it come back to the particular place from where the rain origin therefore this is water cycle so this is starting with the earth okay and it ends with the earth so in the earth there is water in the earth there is the water water and this water evaporates then there is condensation then there is the formation of the, the cloud and again the, there is the rain therefore the, the full circle is water circle is is complete so this is the particular circle that the writer also wants to talk now let us see my dear children so how this uh, particular poem actually starts in which manner in which style it starts the manner of the, the style is this is a conversation style con va suition conversation means there there is as if there is a discussion between two person one a another b so now a is the poet and b is the rain so when you are talking to another person and when the when the person is giving the response then if it is not the living things that means you are giving life to it means you are personified have you got it my dear children that means here the rain is personified and who art thou who art thou thou means you okay this is the, the old english who art thou said i to the, the soft falling shower shower is the shower is the rain okay rain is the falling and 
I is the poet, I is Walt Whitman, and he is talking to the, the talking to the rain. Rain as if the person, and therefore as he is talking, conversing, discoursing with the rain, therefore the rain is personified, and more particularly you will see that rain is not only having the, the sound, it is also talking as if it is a man. Now he will be telling his own story. So, it is very strange, it is very stunning, very surprising that the rain gives the response and this response now is decoded. It is told, it is told in its own language. Now that the poet is a visioner, he is a seer, he can see and understand, therefore he translated the voice of the, the rain in, its, in our own language in English language. So, what you, what you, what you see? What we, what we notice and what the, does the rain tells? The rain tells that I am the poem of word. Okay? I am the poem of word. So now when uh, somebody is uh, telling I am poem of earth. Poem of earth. So here you notice, one thing you notice, I is different and the earth is different. So this is object number B and this is object number A and uh, these are two objects are not only compared, they are likened. Alright, my dear children. They are likened means as if this thing A is almost similar to the, the thing B and therefore this is called the metaphor. So what is the, the what is the figure of speech? The figure of speech here is the metaphor. I am the, the poem of art. I am the, the poem of art. Who is the, the poem of art? Rain is, rain is equal to poem. Means there is lot of similarity between the, the rain and the, the poem and the, the rain is telling as if it is a personified, it is a given the, the life and therefore it is giving the, the, giving the, the answer or response to the, the query or the question made by or, or sought by, S-O-U-G-H-T, sought by the poet. So it is very much surprising that the, the rain gives the answer. Now my simple question to you my dear children is what is the, the particular sound? Okay, we are very much uh, familiar with the sound, sound of the, the rain. So what is uh, that sound call? So the rain water falling on the, the roof making a repeated a rhythmic sound, very light sound is called what? It is called the pattern. P A double P E R Peter. Okay, that means we listen to the Peter and our heart suits. Our heart suits means our heart pacified because it is so pacifying. It is so pacifying. Therefore, it is all the beneficial impact of the rain told by the rain himself. Because the rain is personified here. Therefore, let us continue, my dear children. Here you go. Let us continue. Soft falling here means dropping softly. Shower means that the rain drop when they fall continuously onto the earth. So the simple explanation, let us see. The simple explanation. The poem begins with the poet asking the, the question, asking the, the question. For the identity of the, the soft falling rain. In so when you are asked the question like who are you, then you will be telling sir, I am the, the son of, I am the, the daughter of so and so. My father's name is so and so. I read in so, okay, in class 11 like this means you are talking about your own identity. Master the surprise of the, the poet, the rain replies to his question which the poet translates for his readers. The rain in its own voice tells the poet that she is the poem of this earth. She is the poem of this earth. The rain is trying to say that as a music or poetry gives pleasure to human beings, the rain gives happiness to the mother earth. So now, what is what is the logic behind this comparison? Rain is telling. So, what does the rain tell? I am the 
and the poem of the third. Now we know what are the purpose for which the poems are written. So poems are written for number one for entertainment, number two for enlightenment means giving some knowledge, number three for some modification, for some modification some messages are given and accordingly, accordingly people act, the government act and accordingly they are from the similar manner, the rain also tells that yes, I am also like you, what I do, I, I come into the form of the rain and then what, what I do, I do a lot of things, okay. I does the work of the, the I does the work of the, the sweeper. I, I, I work as sweeper. What I do, I sweep and sweep, clean the, the earth. I beautify it. I beautify it. Means I am the beautifier. Without uh, me, you cannot uh, think a life. Means again, I give life. Means I am the, the, I'm the, I'm the, the person. And the person who gives light to you means under the savior. And also what I do, I do. Do what I protect you also. And without me, you cannot, cannot leave you because I give light to the unborn, ungerminated seeds. So in this manner, what I do, I give light to the non-living things, buried thing, uh, hidden thing. Or the latent dormant things. Therefore, I am also the giver of life. Then let us uh, come to the next stanza, my dear children. So here we go, stanza number two. Eternal I rise, impalpable out of the, the land and the bottomless sea, a foe to the heaven, whence back they fought, all together chains and yet the same. Do you agree, my dear children? So now, who is the I here? I here is the rain. What does the rain tell? Eternal I rise means I rise eternally means Usko Hindi mein kya bolte hai? Shashat Matlab, there is a no break to read means there is limitless this process is a continuous process means I rise up continuously so wow, how, I, how I rise up when I become the vapor then due to the, the, due to the mercy of the, the sun I Go up, and this process is continual. This process is eternal, and then I'm impalpable. Okay, I'm impalpable. So now, my dear children, when this im is added, okay, then im is equal to not. Palpable means that can be touched. That can be touched. Impalpable is the opposite that cannot be touched. Means that is called intangible intangible therefore when i n or i m is added so the word is made the antonym or the opposite therefore when i go when i go up eternally i go i cannot be touched because my cha my change my form is change okay originally what what i am i am is to o means hydrogen I, I actually is a form of hydrogen and oxygen. So, wherever I am, whether I am in the form of the vapor or in the form of water, my content, my content is the same, but my form may be different, my shape may be different, my appearance may be different. That is what the, the, the rain tone. Eternal I rise impalpable out of the land and the bottomless sea, upward to the heaven, whence I vaguely form, all together change, yet the same. So when I go up, you will see my my position. My I become the, the vapor. Okay. When I go up, I become the, the vapor. My form is totally changed. Earlier, earlier I was solid. Okay. I could be touched. Then again I I evaporates. And because of the, the vapor, nobody can uh, touch me. My form is altogether changed. But here the, the same. This is a paradoxical line, my dear children. Because even though it is, oh, it is a, it is a vaguely formed, or it is a, it is a, it is a, the form is a change. Yet it is all the same because its contents, 
it contains or it components its components are the same vaguely formed by means of what vague means what dim not clear or distinct d i s t i n c t not clear or distinct therefore he goes up who goes up he or she uh, we are talking about she okay the the the, po, the rain then due to the mercy of the, the sun it uh, goes up and then what uh, happen there is a break or indistinct form now it is in the process of the condensation therefore it is a uh, now condensing it is a uh, forming the droplets or it is a uh, forming the small drop of water and then then it is a uh, it is finally it will be forming the, the cloud therefore he is telling that yes my form is totally changed yet i am the same and the same with my origin that is water then let us go let us uh, go for let us uh, see the, the explanation here to in the, the written form let us uh, see the explanation then our conception will be solidified that let us see explanation the part says that the rain is an eternal process but it takes different forms at different times it arises from the, the land and the, the deep deep or bottomless sea in the, the form of intangible water water evaporates and goes up to the sky or the heaven there it takes an indistinct shape or vaguely formed in the, the form of cloud in the form of cloud Although it changes its form or shape, its core matter, its core matter means its components, com, o, nens. Its components are the same. Since a vapor and the cloud to water, they can they can be transformed into the other. The word impalpable and eternal indicates that the nature is not fully understood, and some part of always remain beyond our reach. so now the poet always uses the word for some implied meaning so here also impalpable eternal bottomless these words actually are some of the words that are that are kind of riddle riddle means some sort of puzzle that cannot to we cannot to solve okay so impalpable actually impalpable eternal bottomless this actually talks about what the riddle that actually talks about the mystery it talks about the mystery of life matlab jeevan aisa ek matlab story hai jo story samajhna thoda mushkil hai thoda mushkil hai ye miss this is mystical in nature then let's come to the next stanza there you go let's continue stanza 3 i descend to to left the drought at to me dust layers of the, the globe and all that in them without me were seeds only let them unborn so my dear children let's continue once again i descend to to left the drought i descend so this uh, you see some of the, the words are little uncommon uncommon i lab lab means what i bet b a t e t bet means i actually do what i take the opportunity of the thing the thing the drought means suffering from suffering from from what suffering from the lack of water there are many deserts there are many many places where there is no rain at all or the density of the rain is very 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 meager very very small therefore what i do when i come i descend descend means opposite of ascent a s c e n t iska opposite ascent is this one going up and descent is going down i descend to left i descend to left means bath or wash wash the drought atomis atom means the small particles okay the components of the, the atom dust layers of the, the globe and all that in them without me were sits only and latent unborn so latent means what latent means dormant d o r m a n t dormant means hidden hidden so kya hota hai ki so during the time of the monsoon what happened to the seeds seeds are seeds are at the mercy of the, the shower and they are thrown to different places or scattered to different places 
and they are buried underground. And they remain there and they wait for what? They wait for the they wait for the monsoon. They wait for the water. And when the water comes, when this water comes, the hidden, the hidden or the, the dormant seed comes to life and sprout to life. Okay, spring to life or S P R E T sprout to life means life comes out from the from the seed which was lying dead, which was lying buried or dormant inside the inside the cave of the earth. Therefore, let us continue. Here we go. Atomy here means very tiny particles. Glob means the earth, Latin means dormant or inactive, but it covered, hidden or, or the like. You can write any meaning, okay, any meaning which are similar to it so that your vocabulary also increased and you can have a beautiful expressive power. Now, my dear children, now let us see the specific form of the explanation. Let us see this line. The rain that pour down from above to wash away drawers and dust layers enveloping earth. Enveloping earth. It satisfies the thirst of the dry earth and heals everything that is degrading and is lying lifeless. The shower removes the dust particles and make earth clean and green. The rain also helps the germination of the seed which were lying dormant due to due to dry spell means in the germination process also this uh, water or the, the rain helps helps in the process of the germination also germination of the hidden buried seeds too now let us come to the next part there we go let us continue next part and forever by day and night i give back life to my own origin and make it pure and beautify it and forever by day and night, I give back life to my own origin. So you see, my dear children, this is another beneficial, beneficial work. Work that is done by whom? Done by the rain. What is the beneficial work? It is a giver of life also. It is a giver of life. So who actually gives the life? Who, give, who gives the life? It is God. God gives the life. Now, God gives us through some agent, and this agent is the rain. So now rain is telling that I can give a life back to my own origin from where I was born. I was born, born from the earth, and I give back life because, because I help in germinating and then cleaning and purifying and beautifying this earth. Therefore, I am beautifier, I am germinator, I am also the cleaner and, and also the and also the beautifier. And this a process, my dear children, is a never ending process. This is a never ending process or a ceaseless process. Ceaseless means continuous. It is a continuous process. This a process never stops. This is a continuous process and this water cycle continues. Rain, vapor, then condensation, cloud, again rain, this water cycle continues. And this is an ever ending or never ending process. Therefore, let us see the meaning, the meaning of these words. Origin means the, the source, beautify means make beautiful, issuing means originating, fulfillment means complete. Completing the cycle assignment, wandering means moving, react means cured about, unreact, uncared for, duly, proper. So last line may let us see my dear children, for song issuing from its birth place after fulfillment, wandering, react or unreacted, duly with love returns. Now here my dear children you will see that rain is compared to the song and this comparison is rain is not like not like the, the song, but rain is equal to the, the song. Therefore, when rain is equal to the, the song, what is the figure of speech? This is metaphor. Because the point of comparison is more. Point of comparison is more. Now, the rain, what does what does it do? Okay, we will see the, the point of similarity between the, the rain and the, the song. First, let us see 
what does the rain do rain rain issuing from means originating from its birth birthplace means that it if it evaporates and after evaporation what it does it forms the cloud and it the travel in the, the in the sky and then after fulfillment of its own assignment or the work what it does it once again come back to the earth in order to in order to assign to the work that's meant to be done on this earth after wandering means after traveling okay after traveling after traveling it travels it tours extensively okay it tours it tours either into the sky or into the earth and rec means what heat as double e d heat so somebody may listen to the song there is a song by the rain somebody may not may not listen to or he pay heat to, to eat so in this uh, in this uh, way sometime it is secured sometime it is secured sometime it is not secured and but he is totally unmindful about about the reaction of the people what it does it goes on doing it goes on continuing its own job or the assignment of of beautifying decorating giving life to its own origin my dear children now in the similar manner in the, the similar manner what a song song means the poem poem is written by whom poem is written by the, the poet so this a poem also what does the poem do the poem also written with a purpose deliberately with a, some purpose first one is to give the, the entertainment this a music the rhythm has the people in order to in order to get their mind entertained okay because otherwise life is very dull if you therefore what does they do they entertain the people and when entertain they also learn some good message or the moral so uh, this a moral this a moral rectifies their ways on this earth and this also become helpful on the days to come therefore therefore the work or the assignment of the, the rain and the point are the same and therefore therefore they are similar the poet uses a appropriate figure of speech or the poetic device called metaphor in order to compare the rain to the sun so my dear children a natural question arises sir why this last line is put in the bracket it is a put in the bracket ye bracket ko matlab kya bolte hai parenthesis bolte hai parenthesis क्या बोलते हैं पैरेंथेसिस ये पैरेंथेसिस जो होता है ओके जो हम सेंटेंस मतलब लिखते हैं जो ब्रैकेट में लिखते हैं दैट इज नॉट द पार्ट ऑफ आवर स्पीच और पार्ट ऑफ आवर डायलॉग देयरफॉर इन दिस पोएम आल्सो वी सी दैट इट इज नॉट द पार्ट ऑफ द डायलॉग इट इज द पार्ट ऑफ द असेसमेंट इट इज द पार्ट ऑफ द पार्ट ऑफ द इवैल्यूएशन ऑफ द पोएट द पोएट नाउ ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ द the work of the rain now the poet assesses that yes the work of the, the rain and my work is similar therefore this is the it is the assessment made by the poet and therefore as it is not in the, the form of the, the dialogue between the, the poet and the rain therefore it is kept within bracket i suppose my dear children you understood the whole content of the, the poem now let us uh, see the, the explanation here explanation here for this last lines which is already explained now we'll do the work of repeating the rain is involved in a in a continued process of giving life and art by providing water to dormant seeds and making the, the earth more beautiful and full of greenery rain helps in enhancing the, the beauty of the, the earth in the absence of water everything turns dull or lifeless and dust accumulates everywhere so you can think if there is no rain life cannot continue therefore here the rain boastfully talks about its own assignment and this work or the accomplishment the work that is done by the, the rain is really marvelous really wonderful really very very beneficial to each and all the last two lines are the, the poet's own words and his reflection upon the, the answer given by the, the rain the poet observed that the life of a rain is similar to that of song a song or poem is creativity at its best it has the power to calm to heal 
rejuvenate, transform and thrill. In the, the same way, repeated evaporation and condensation purifies the, the rain, purifies the, purifies the rain. The entire environment get drenched in the rain, dust particles settle down and there is greenery everywhere which makes the, the whole art beautiful to look at. The poet therefore always draws a parallel between parallel or comparison between the rain and the music as both have the rhythm and ability to thrill. Both of them rejuvenate and beautify. Rejuvenate means means in vigor. Vigor V I G O U R in vigor means in vigor means giving vigor means energy. Giving life. Okay. Giving life. Give life too. That is called rejuvenate. So my dear children, I suppose your understanding of the, the poem is very complete. So now we will be very specific. We will be going to the, the theme after this total discussion and we will go to go to some of the, the questions. Then our poem will be quite clear. So uh, my dear children, we will be now talking about a little two lines only. It, uh, two lines only on the, the, on the style of the, the poem. So the style of the poem, as you have noticed, this is written in the free verse. Okay, it is written in the free verse, means that there is no rhyme, and it is written as modern poems, it is written in the free verse. Walt Whitman broke several conventions, several conventions, conventions of the party when writing this poem. There is no rhyme scheme, nor do the, the lines stay of the, the same length, means the length of the line also is not uniform it is a varying nature means sometimes the line will be bigger sometimes it will be smaller although each phrase is just enough to be read in one breath we find ourselves breathless as the, as the line runs on and, and eventually becomes a part of the, the whole this kind of poetry was known as prosaic poetry okay this sort of poetry is called the prosaic poetry means the poetry in the form of the prose Party in the form of the prose that is party that is written written like prose. So now, my dear children, let us continue. So we will see the message of the, the poem as it was previously committed. So, my dear children, in this uh, poem, the theme of the, the nature, theme of the, the relation with the, the nature. And that the work of the, the nature is uh, very much clearly revealed or expressed. So we can see that the beneficial effect of nature in the, the form of the, the rain that is uh, very much uh, beneficial to the people. And this is the, the kind of the, the kind of the, the theme that the, the poet deals, and more particularly the, the message that is given is that that it can also the rain can also as the poem does rain can also change the face of the earth as poem also change the face of the earth just by their message and their moral. Then uh, let us uh, continue my dear children. So many figures of uh, speech are used like personification, metaphor, parallelism or simile, hyperbole and imagery. So in the, the beginning line imagery, so we will be discussing other, other figures are already discussed and we will be now discussing only this uh, figure. Imagery, my, my dear children, is the plural form of image. This is coming from the image. Image, uh, there are two types of the, the image. So one is the virtual image and another one is the, the real image. When you are standing, your sh shadow, your shadow is your image. So now when we are reading between the, the lines, when you are reading between the, the lines, when you read the, the lines of the, the poem, then a particular picture in a particular image is created. Therefore, this this a group of the, the image together is called the imagery. So, in the, the first line of the, the poem, the first line of the, the poem, soft falling shower. So, here what what we can see, you can see that the rain is falling, and we can uh, see again what the sound of the rain. That is the the painter. This that means all the, the senses, all the, the senses are invited here. Therefore. This imaginary, this imagery is the gentle imagery. Give the reader an image of the, the gentle rain 
or drizzle. Then the, the dialogue between the, the poet and the rain, it creates an maze of showers and drops of water falling down from the heaven to earth and infusing it with the greenery, purity and beauty. Therefore, now let us go to the question and answer. So, here you go. Let us continue. <clears throat> so, we have uh, come to page number 42 of our, of our textbook. So, the, there are the, the questions. The questions are, there are two voices in the poem. Why, who do they belong to? Which lines indicate this? What does the phrase stands to tell mean? There is a parallel draw between rain and the music. Which what indicate this? Explain the, the similarity between the two. How the cyclic movement of the rain brought out into the poem? Compare it with what you have learnt in science. Why are the last two lines put within bracket? List the pair of opposite found into the poem. So, if we discuss uh, this this uh, questions, then <clears throat> I suppose your understanding of the poem will be complete. So now, my dear children, first let us uh, come to come to the first question. So, the first question, let us go to the first question. There are two voices into the poem. There are two voices into the poem. The two voices into the poem are the voice of the rain and the voice of the voice of the poet. Voice of the poet. The poem begins uh, with a conversational tone. Means there is a dialogue between the, the rain and the, the poet. The lines are, and who art thou? Art means are. A R E R. Said I to Said I to the rain. Said I to the soft falling shower. Then uh, question number two. What does the phrase strange to tell? What is a strange? Strange means what? Very surprising. S U R P R I S I N G. Surprising means a very, very wonderful. Okay. It is a very strange. Means a very, very uncommon. The phrase is strange to tell means that it is an unusual or extraordinary answer given by the, the rain, raindrops to the, the poet who asks who it was. Then let us uh, come to the, the next one. Question number three. There is a parallel drawn between the, the rain and the, the music. Which words indicate this? Explain the, the similarity between the, the two. So this uh, parallel means of what? The similarity. Similarity. So, in other word, this is called the simile. simile. So, what is the, the similarity? So, let us see the, the sim similarity. And the, the poem of the, the earth. So, we have already discussed it. So, the comparison between the, between the, the rain and the poem. For song issuing from its birth place, after fulfillment, wandering, wrecked or unwrecked, duly with the love written, they both return to place of their origin after fulfilling their task or assignment. Then let us uh, come to the next question, question number 4. How is the cyclic movement of the, the rain brought out into the poem? Comment, comment it with, with the, what you have learnt in science. So my dear children, in all of the subjects, there is correlation between subjects. Alright? So here also, we are applying our own knowledge of the, the science here in our in our poem, in our rain poem. Therefore, you will have to tell about this whole process of the evaporation, condensation, cloud, cloudifying, uh, and uh, then, then, then coming to the form of the rain in the in the form of the descending. Then uh, let us see the answer. Answer to this question, question number four. Uh, let us continue. Let us see the, the question. Here we move. The poet explains that the rain drops into the form of the, the water vapor, then rises up from the, the land and the, the sea, and then descends again onto the earth and dry land in order to wash it down and hence come back to its origin. This is the, the cyclic movement explained by the poet. It is similar to the, the water cycle we have learnt in. So, this is the cyclic movement of the, the rain, and this is similar to or akin to. Similar to or akin to, A K I N, akin to means means similar to, similar to what the water cycle, okay? Water cycle. This, is, this cyclic moment is compared to the, the water cycle that we have learnt in our book of the science. The last two lines are put with a bracket because they do not form the, the voice of the, the rain or the poet. 
they only continue general observation made by the poet about the, the course of a song. The course of a song means the particular journey, journey or a tool by the, the song. Alright? Uh, so, my dear children, so I suppose you understood the whole poem. Only some uh, few words are there which are unfamiliar. It is better to write down the, 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 the unfamiliar words or the vocabulary and and hence your existing vocabulary to make it make it work wonder okay with that hope let me conclude thanks to all promising to meet you very soon with another lesson lesson from the grammar okay then thank you bye bye have a very good day